Hello my friends, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in a mod I have not played for quite a while, Equestria at War. So, let's go ahead and play alone, and frankly, I don't know anything about this mod. Well, not that much, but we're going to play as a Griffonian Empire because I was on the subreddit and someone suggested that if you don't know what to do, play as a Griffonian Empire. So, uh, we're going to play with historical AI on just because... I don't know what's going to happen, and I'll show you some custom game rules. No one's going to get any buffs. Everything's pretty much exactly the same. Just let's get started with it. So, uh, the last time on this channel that I played Equestria at War was in 2018. At the time of this recording, it's 2020. It's been a while, and apparently there's been some updates, a lot of updates or something like that, to the mod, and I know the mod is very, very well developed, and that's kind of why I want to come back to this. Um, pretty much. So, if you want to read about the lore or the backstory of the Griffonian Empire, the sick bird of Griffonia, here it is. And here is the last little part if you want to read that as well. All I know is that our king, our emperor, is old and he's probably going to die soon. But, we'll do the best we can. Let's see, our capital is Griffenheim, and we're pretty Germanic as far as I understand here. We only have three research slots, so be it. So we're gonna grab. We've got. We're Griffin. We're we have a race that we are. You know that we're part of. We're not ponies. We're Griffins. I like this enchanted tools to get more resource efficiency gain and construction speed. Oh, that's a lot of days. Yeah, we'll do it anyways. Why not? And I guess industry, just your normal stuff. Production efficiency cap. We could get that, but let's go with this. Cool. We've got some unassigned divisions. We're probably not going to be using them soon. Now, it's my understanding that these griffins, these are griffins, these are special forces. And these are pretty good special forces? Griffins? I don't know. We'll see what happens with when I use them. And we got some tanks. Some tank ponies. Cool. Uh, our regular army. I'm going to go with Oscar Silverfeather just because he's pretty good at an attack. Uh, there he is. Goat Stuffer. Uh, I'll do it anyways. Oscar. And we'll, get, we'll grab a Field Marshal. Elias Bronze Tail. Max entrenchment, max attack. I want people who can attack. Erech Ebonving? Ooh, changeling. Huh, well, I guess I'll go with you because you're pretty good on attack, Erech. Cool. And you're kind of like a special forces and tanks. I'm going to throw you together, actually. Under. Ooh, I guess he lies for now. It'll be fine, whatever. Uh, tanky boy, or animal. Cool. We're going to put you under diamond dogs. Uh, where's the tank person? Oh, there it is. Reinhold Thundertail. Cool. Griffins. And then our special forces, our special little knights. August Duskving. Defense. Artillery attack. Get some artillery on our special forces. That sounds pretty good, actually. But there's someone here who's pretty good at leveling up. Oh, we got a substance abuser. I didn't know animals could use drugs, but you know what? You learn something new every day. Ah, uh, just go with this. Ferdinand Dan Dawn Claw. Cool. And we have nothing, no upgrades. We'll get some infantry upgrades for them later. We're low on pony power. Uh, the templates for these guys are okay-ish. Imperial Guard divisions are they're okay-ish. Do that, do that. We're going to get some Imperial Guards. Because why not? And a Griffinheim. Very good. And we can't do a focus yet. Ah, uh, there's a guy on the thumbnail. Emperor Grover V. He's probably feeling a little older at this point. We can't do anything just yet. we got to wait a little bit first, to my understanding, before things really start falling apart. Now, there's going to be a lot of reading in this campaign, at least in this, the very early part of this campaign. That being said, I'm not going to read everything. Probably, I'll read as much as I can. We'll see what happens. Oh, actually, we have an Air Force 2. Tactical bombers, fighters. Cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, we are producing some guns, some bolt-action rifles, which... I don't exactly understand how ponies or griffins can use bolt-action rifles, but we're going to go with it. Early fighters, early bombers. Now let's take a good look at our national spirits. We have a bloated bureaucracy, which looks pretty bad. Uh, Reich's army, so we're kind of Germanic. Train trip, cool. Modest illiteracy, okay. Changeling Griffonian attaché. And then... Archonet of Boreas. So, a train trip. Despite his deteriorating health, the Emperor has decided to embark on a trip across Herzlein via train in order to showcase the new Emperor railway system and, more importantly, to convince the people that his days are not yet over. Reluctantly, after heavily protesting against the trip and arguing that he should stay in bed, the Emperor's doctors let him go. Nobles and commoners alike gathered at Griffenheim's brand new railway station to witness the Emperor's departure. 
A shining steam locomotive had been, pre been prepared, and with a dozen ornate cards attached to it, all built by the finest metal workers and carpenters money could hire. The trip was supposed to be long and last several weeks, so there was enough space and supplies for His Majesty's entire entourage. When Grover V finally arrived on his personal automobile later than expected, the nobles raced to welcome him and showered him with praise about the railway project and how all would now witness the coming of modernity to the Empire. The Emperor nodded warily, as he always did when receiving empty platitudes from greedy sycophants, and coughed. He slowly walked to the station, escorted by heavily armored Imperial Knights, and was next beset by the commoners, who either lauded his project or begged for reforms to give them land and bread instead of expensive trains. When he finally got inside his private railroad car, he asked not to be disturbed, sat down, sighed, and took a nap. The train whistled, signaling that its journey had just begun. Hmm, what's the worst that could happen? Hmm, now we have a little bit of political power now, and I would love to get a silent recourse. Andrea Bronze Hill. And the Grand Hoofball Game. I'm not going to read this one. It's just like some sort of sports event. So if you want to read it, I'm gonna, you can pause the video now and go ahead and read it. Cool. How exciting. Cool. Sports ball. A gift from Skyfall. Today, like each year, we've received a single coin paid personally by the Chancellor of Skyfall, Gislaim Guishar. The coin and idol is sent as a replacement and consolation prize for the lost idol of Boreas. It has been 35 years since the loss of the idol and 28 since... Guishard came up with a joke. He apparently is still not tired of it. Mar Dam Traitor. Hmm. Uh, okay then. Cool. So we have a developed science base. Because if we don't have that, we get more daily political power, but we lose research speed, which isn't bueno. We only have three research slots, period. Wow, minus 80%. That's really bad. Outdated industrial sector. Well, it could be worse. Agarian society, tribal society, communal society, detached country. Modern society. We want to get that eventually. Uh, now we have enough political power, but I know we're going to get hit a little bit depending on what happens. This is probably not a good idea. Ooh, that might not be bad. Nuclear scientist. I have a good feeling that I want this because I don't ever usually get this. Uh, you know what? After our lunar claw, the earlier I get you, the better it is. So, right now we get 1.48 political power, but something tells me. Something's not going to be good that will happen to us. Go ahead and train these guys since they're here. Uh, you guys are really good. Tanks, we're making... What's the stockpile like? Well, we got a few light tanks. Infantry equipment is looking... Eh? And back home. The railroad trip was a rounding success. The Emperor and his escort had first gone from Griffenheim to Bronzenkreuz, where diamond, loyal diamond dog nobles welcomed them extremely warmly and gave them many gifts. He then traveled to Red Vetter, where he spoke with Duchess Gabriella Eagleclaw, his dear cousin and friend, and then crossed the Griff King to Rabbi uh, de Vigels, where he enjoyed a quiet dinner with Duke Gerlach IV of Favizia. Now this journey took him to Oldenburg, Old Wingburg, where the local peasant council welcomed him, its members offering their own fresh farm produce to show their gratitude for the railroad. So, if you want to read the rest of this, go right ahead. All that happens is that the emperor returns home, and he's kind of in pain, and then, and he eventually collapsed. He's lost consciousness, and the 90-year-old griffin tried to carry him on his own and sh shouted for aid. Ooh. The Emperor was quickly rushed to his private chambers and is currently being taken care of by the Emperor's finest medical experts. The Archon spends day and night sleeplessly praying to the gods, and we just lose everything that we just gained, so... Ooh. And the friendship game, so quaint but not our concern. So, yeah. Like I said, I'm not going to read everything here. I usually try to read at least all the National Spirits and all the events, but sometimes there's just going to be too many events. Ooh, and since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and t put like a ring around the capital just so that we look pretty nice. Oh, wait, hold on. Are, these are griffins. They're wearing pickle halbas. Now, that's awesome. I love pickle halbas. I actually want to get a pickle halba someday. An authentic pickle halba. I think that'd be really, really cool. Uh, oh. Oh, don't tell me the street transfer tool mod doesn't work. And the emperor's dead. Ooh. Unfortunately, after nearly a month of treatments and therapy, ranging from latest scientific method methods and met medicine to holy anointments by priests, Zebra potions and other exotic magical mystery cures. Emperor Grover V of his name was embraced by the claw of Boreas at the age of 47. Jesus. His caretakers said his last words were, Boreas, did I do good? Well, if you want to read this, go ahead. So now, history repeats itself due to... Due to his only son and heir, Prince Grover VI, not being of age in which he is capable of ruling the country himself, our regency council consisting of nobles, merchants, princes, and temple officials shall take over the apparatus of state until a more suitable solution is found. We can only pray it doesn't end like the previous regency. Boreas, save us all. Ooh. Non-aligned government. We lose political power. A lot of stability. We get Grover VI. We're currently not aligned. 
And the Emperor's now dead. Hmm. Rat de dry. Wasn't rat in German like poison? I know, it's supposed to be Council of Three, but... Hmm. Alright, well, hey, hey, we can do a focus now. That's pretty great. We only have minus 148 political power, but eh, whatever. We're gonna go with the Council of Three. So, the decadent noble scum can never again be allowed to hold the reins of the Empire, which belong to holy griffins who are guided by the gods themselves and know well what is best for both the people and the nation. Thanks to their venerable wisdom, our future will be bright and blessed by Boreas. Now, I could go to that path, but... I kind of want the Archon. Archon. Let's see what happens. The Emperor's dead. But the Empire mourns. Wow. That's not a lot of stability, not gonna lie. Um, is it safe to leave these guys here? You know what? That's actually not a bad idea. Go ahead and stack four divisions here in the center. Just so... Just, just in case. And do that, too. Bicolini becomes Prime Minister, who we understand as an Italian guy. A new gift from Skyfall. A new gift has been sent from Skyfall, a single coin and a letter. The officials were puzzled as Chancellor Guichard would only ever send one letter each year, like clockwork. And this was the second one? Intrigued by the anomaly, the Foreign Affairs Ministry opened the letter and reviewed it. And they could only balk at the horror. The Chancellor Skyfall just sent them a silver Grover coin. The letter was addressed to the young emperor and snarkily offered him a parody of condo condolences. It is said that Guichard was offering the Grover coin, hoping that it could replace the Emperor's defunct father. The news quickly got out of hand and caused, caused quite a stir at the court. However, it was decided that the young Emperor was not known, or was not to know, as to protect him in the time of grief. Yet, no Griff, or, or no Griff would ever forget Guichard's cruel joke. Could one possibly sink any lower? Probably. Oh, yeah. You know what? Even though we got the plus 15% more political power. Doesn't help us that much? It does help us a little bit, but not that much, you know. And Bronze Hill sends a gift. In the wake of the Emperor's death, our vassals and Bronze Hill have presented us with a truly beautiful gift. It is part of Diamond Dog's culture that in the event of a death, the dog's clothes to deceased will gather gemstones, known as j flower gems, gems, and sculpt them into a memorial. These dogs have remembered their loyalty to the crown well and have submitted their gift, crafting a truly impressive statue of Grover V constructed out of pre precious gems gathered by hundreds of thousands of the country's citizens. Many have called for us to place this statue in the Imperial Mausoleum as a sign of our gratitude for this cherished gift. While it would no doubt be a glorious addition to the Emperor's tomb, it cannot be ignored that this statue would fetch a rather high price amongst art collectors with the money helping to stabilize our budget. It's, it's a shame it never arrived. Let's just send our thanks to Bronzo. I think that would be good. We don't get much from it, except a nice, beautiful statue. But you never know. I just can't get over the pickle halbas. I love pickle halbas so much. I love hats. Hats are amazing. Now, we're going to need some more fuel. I almost said energy cells. But fuel. Fuel, let's see. We have two. Oh, a letter from Skyfall. No, arrived to the Griffinheim today. One penned by Chancellor Guichard of Skyfall and addressed to the very young Grover him personally. The officials were puzzled. The Chancellor was known for his lack of diplomacy towards the Empire and especially his petty cruelty towards the Imperial, Imperial di Dynasty. And so the letter was opened and reviewed by the officials under order from the Regency to make sure it wouldn't hurt the young Emperor. The panel decided that it was safe for him to read. Grover VI's personal tutor was tasked to bring him the letter and read it to him. The young Emperor acquiesced. Without hesitation, knowing a little at his age of the old Chancellor's deeds, Guichard, through his letter, offered the fledgling his condolences and went to describe what he did against his father and why. The tone was apologetic, if a belt self sobering and gentle. Following, or finally, the old Griff apologized for all his deeds and told Grover that he hoped that maybe someday there could be a detente between Scoffle and the Empire, and that maybe, just maybe, the young Emperor could live through the less brutal times. The young Grover didn't quite understand the world detente, but his eyes were watery by the end of the letter. The tutor asked him if he wanted to write an answer. Grover responded to simply write back, thank you. A whole two words. The next week, the Foreign Affairs Ministry received news that Guichard was sending or was sending donations to Imperial charities in the name of the late Emperor. At last, he seems to have finally found decency in him. A whole... <sighs> Ten political power. Honestly, I might just raise this because uh, we have a good amount of these guys already, and I definitely need more of these guys. We don't have a lot of things. Oh yeah, we have crystals too. But we have the Council of Three. You know what? So we have Arion's speech for 20 days. Protus speaks out, or Declina Sauberum, which sounds like a small coup or something like that. The Empire is more unstable than now than ever. The Emperor's death has raised even greater concerns for us, specifically in the army. Many officers have become disloyal and treacherous, something that we cannot accept and tolerate if the Empire is to survive. We must purge all disloyal personnel at once, no matter the price, which we get debuffs, quite a bit of debuffs for 280 days, which I want to start as soon as possible. The Archon takes his stand. Um, if you want to read this, I'll let you go ahead and read this, but uh, the arrows faintly smiled. The time for justice had finally come for the Empire and Gods. Cool! More stability, I like that. And we're supporting, I guess, some fascism support as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that 
that would take too long for me to read. Just we're trying to move through this a little bit faster. So, uh, yeah. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. It's not good, but I. Just, I need guns. I need guns. And we get RX Army, the daily Army XP, which is really nice, and some Army exercises, which is good as well. Good, good, good. Point three to a day. Socialist Republic Longsword declared war on the Longswordian government. Civil War. Um. Okay, that's, that's how they hold the stuff. Oh, that's how Griffins hold weapons. Okay. Cool. Let's see. What else? Let's get the tried and true mechanical computing. I love research speed. We only have 11,000 manpower, which would be a lot in Old World Blues, but this is not Old World Blues. This is Equestria at War. Now, I'm not exactly sure which nation we're supposed to be. Is this like the Hungarian M? Austro-Hungarian Empire? Or the HRE or something like that? Because, you know, we're kind of German. We're not quite Germany, I think. But we'll see what happens. So the Barrack Revolt. Ferdinand Dong Claw sat in his office located in one of the innumerable military bases that dotted the capital of the Griffonian Empire. Ferdinand considered himself a patriot, and in a sense, that was true. He did love the Empire in his own strange way, and it was precisely because of that love that he had to rebel. In his mind, the Empire simply couldn't survive without a radical change in the status quo. Could an already weakened Empire survive with a mere child in charge with the nobles circling around him like vultures? Are we like Puyi in China or something? No, something had to be done. Ferdinand knew that his chances of success were slim, and that he would mostly just likely go down in history as another nameless traitor to the Empire, a fool whose futile rebellion was quickly crushed. Reports started to trickle in, and his forces were converging on the Imperial Palace, and soon they would face the Palace Guard in direct combat. Ferdinand could do nothing but wait, and hope that his soldiers could match the ferocity of the hardened defenders that they now faced. The next few minutes would decide the fate of the Empire, and by extension, the course of history itself. Now, that's important, because down here... We can do the Archon. I think there's another one down here where... Ooh, I'm not sure exactly sure where, like, the coup person does stuff. But anyways, the Revolt is crushed, or the soldiers storm the palace. I'm gonna go with the Revolt is crushed. I still like the monarchy. I wanna see what the monarchy does, so... Who's who's the leader? Deponia? A traitor's death. Deathclaw, or Dawnclaw, one of the Empire's more recent traitors, was publicly executed in the capital today, with the event drawing little attention from the rest of the Empire. Ever since the attempting a uh, failed coup several days ago, the Griffin had simply awaited his fate. Once the time had finally came to lay judgment down on him, no leniency was taken and he was found guilty of high treason as well as conspiracy to commit regicide. There was only one punishment worthy of such evils, and he was sentenced to be hung from the gallows at dawn. If you want to read the rest of this, go ahead. But it was a fitting end to kill him off. He died a mundane death, which we get political power and stability, and we lose the general that I already chose. How disappointing. Uh, fort attack, division defense, bearer of artillery, I like that. I don't think getting, using a drug guy is a really smart idea, but you know, I could be wrong. Cecilia, oh, this is the one who can give us, give us more army XP. Uh, sure, I guess, why not? Low pony power, well, at least we've got 0.35 political power day, and we've gone through a coup attempt. Socialist Republic of Longsword was annexed. County of Longsword has been capitulated. Deponia. Oh, that's a... What the heck? King Grif... Grimhoof. Huh. High poverty. Stable trading with Grenicliff. Mass illiteracy. Old country. Oh, hold on. What type of faction do we have here? So we are in the... We're in the Reichs back. We have the Clan of Seibrung. Cool. And let us next do... Uh... Proteus speaks out. After a long but hasty journey across the sky, the Archon of Arcturus has come to Griffenheim, yet he did not rest but immediately got to work by aiding his fellow Archons. It's a rare sight, for the warrior priest is known more for his fondness of combat than his work ethic. Now he is ready to hold a speech to the people and, more importantly, soldiers. The River Coalition. Huh. Now that's kind of interesting flag. That is adorable. River Swirl. Absolutely adorable. Summer Sun Celebration Lies. Crystal Fair. Our gods raise a son, not her. Oh my goodness. Queen White Star. Oh, cool. Very cool. Oh. Some unsigned divisions, huh? Good, we can train them. Oh, we can do that. Very nice. I'm lowering the speed for a specific reason, which I will tell you in just a little bit. Puppy. Piggy. All right, I lowered the speed just in case something would happen, like this, because my cat wanted to come in the room. So our friends, the Greifvaldians, Count Claudet of Greifwald, who has 
recently sent a diplomatic mission to Griffenheim has been seen it has seen it to fit to propose that we could further the economic ties by opening up trade between the empire and the small nation, setting how much it would curb Aquilius influence in the region. What shall we do? We would annoy them. Or that'd be a waste of money. Um Hmm. Well I guess yeah. Sure, why not? Trade sounds good. Where's Oh Hmm. Kingdom of Winged Body, Proteus speaks out, and let's do Arion's speech. The Archon of Ayr has arrived from Romao to support his companions. Known for his religious zeal, he has already prepared to hold a passionate speech about the current state of the Empire and the role of the gods in improving it. It is certain he will throw around many accusations and condemnations. Cool, man. Oh my god, there's a speech. If you want to read the speech, go ahead. But I do notice that as soon as the muscular knight Archon appeared. Muscular? Oh, buddy. Uh... The Griffins erupted into cheers and chanted his name. If you want to read the rest of this, go right ahead. You have to admit, that was a good speech. Yes, he is a good speaker, yeah. Speech, speech, speech. Uh, what is this? The Bandit of Black Hollow. Commonwealth of New Maryland. Now, some of this is a little familiar to me. Just Like I said, I played this in, like, a long time ago, but I know this side a little bit better. Oh, basic machine tools. Wow. It's only July. Uh, Disperse Industry 1, or Concentrate, eh, let's go with Disperse, why not? I want this to be a fairly light playthrough, I guess? I don't know, The Things That Never Happened. An interesting book was published today of Things That Never Happened by Baris Solartail. It follows the life of a character simply known as Roshpin. Eruption, a Republican terrorist who has been ordered by his superiors to assassinate the winged Bardian king, Gumberto. His attempts fail, however, which changes the course of history. The Empire never falls apart, and the Revolution of 978 never takes place. As Griffonia prospers, Eruption begins to question his Republican values and eventually becomes a loyal supporter of the Empire. While the premise of the story is rather simple, the writer focuses more on character of Eruption and his beliefs at the actual plot of the story, and some critics have even pointed out that at times it feels as if this character and the writer are the same person. Hmm. Nevertheless, the book has been generally warmly received both by commoners and nobles alike. Oh, Eruption you say? Ne where have I heard that name before? Hmm. Now, one of the most interesting countries that I think, in my mind, that I don't really know anything about besides everyone else, the one that interests me the most is the Dread League, which seems really cool. Arcturian Order seems cool as well, but the Dread League seems... Hmm. Rosa looks interesting. But, let's see. Sway the Reich's army or aid the commoners? Well, let's do the Ar Reich's army. So, the Imperial Army is a mere shadow of its former self. Only a century ago, it had begun, or had been the greatest army in the entire world, and armed with the finest weapons and having over a million active soldiers. But perhaps those glory days don't have to remain a faded memory. Maybe they can once again become a reality. This, the Archons shall promise to them. If, and if I'm mispronouncing Archon, Archon, let me know. Enchanted Tools. Ah, oh, the person speaks. Great, if you want to read this, go right ahead. Praise Ayr. End the, to the nobility. Awesome. Oops, didn't want that to go on, but whatever. Oh, we finished that up. Society and economy. More, oh, that'd be really nice, more output. But let's get some more construction speed. We could probably use that to build up more factories. Oh, we have nothing. Oh, full crud. The Grand Galloping Gala. Cheers. Cheers, love. We get 0. 0.42 political power a day. Not bad. Jackie Clan, Yaki Yaki Stan, Crystal Empire, Equestria, and then you have Buffalo Chieftain. I almost said Buffalo Chicken. And then we have United Dragon Isles. Hmm. Never played as Equestria. I don't ever play this mod. Except now, I guess. Uh, Griffin, Kingdom of Broadfeld. Pri... Pri... When? Civil War ends. Worrisome news. Uh, cool, I guess. Aid the commoners. So, the common Griffins may be poor and politically powerless, but they are numerous and strengthened by hate and frustration. They demand reforms and reforms they shall receive, not from the corrupt, idle aristocrats, but from the priests of the three temples, who have always prayed for them and helped them in dire times. Yes. And support within the Reich's army. Cool. If you want to read that, go right ahead. War support, pony power, and casual fascism. Just casually being fascist here, I guess. Cool. 0.42 a day. Not bad. Oh, new Daring Do book. Gotta check that book out. Oh, yeah. Let's see. We got 5 army XP, which I would like to increase Imperial Guard divisions, just so that we know that they will be okay. Even though we can't really support them, I might actually instead, though, throw some artillery support on our Imperial Knights. I think that'd be pretty good. But we have aid the commoners, yes. 
the Archon. So, His Holiness Archon Eros the Seventh, the voice of Boreas and the protector of small folk, has managed to become the Imperial Regent. The future of Griffonia lies in his claws. The cursed nobility will pay for their indolence. Indolence. Increase our society development level. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. Aiding the commoners. Great. If you want to read that, go right ahead. We'll deal with her in time. Uh, Gabriela Eagle Claw. Nice. Do the Regency Council. The Rex Partai. Eros the Seventh. Oh, Gisa e Egals. Hmm. With that type of spelling, I've got an interesting idea who is actually that person. But anyways, they're communists. And then... Party. Party, party Ideology Harmony. Edwin Van Cleef. And then you have the Griffonische Socialist Arbeiter Partei. Hmm. de Drei. The bandits of Black Hole declare war on the Prywin Republic. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong too. Hey, but at least we got a, a positive amount of political power. That actually feels really good. Uh, this is. Military training looks pretty good to get more army XP, which I really like, but I can wait perhaps for now. Oh, the Archon. Very good. Oh, region wide and. Industrial integration. Well, let's save our political power first. Awesome. Oh my goodness, we got so many things opened up to us. Let's see, we lose consumer goods, but get more construction speed. Deal with bureaucrats. Bloated bureaucracy. Go over the six. Archon. Nice. Oh, I want to get rid of that. That looks. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, let's do that. Deal with the bureaucrats. Due to our fairly outdated and overly complicated bureaucracy, doing anything official within our borders takes weeks or even months. It's time we trim the fat and streamline the whole bloated, rotten structure before it all comes crashing down upon itself. Who cares how many bureaucrats become unemployed? Most of them are leeches anyways. Which, land reforms? Ooh. Power to the three. Ooh. Oh, yes. And meeting the Emperor. Uh, so... Archon Eros waited patiently yet eagerly in the Child Emperor's throne room. Finally, he had secured his position as regent and saved Griffith VI from the greedy claws of the nobility. All these months of planning and work would finally pay off. The Grand Door opened and maid entered, holding the claw to the young emperor and leading him aside to his new regent. Eros smiled and looked down on the small griffin who glanced at him back shyly. Grover, meet the Archon. He will be your new regent, the maid said. Grover remained silent. Do you know what a regent is, child? Eros asked with a warm voice of a wise grandpa. Grover shook his head in response. See, you see, you're the emperor. A big boss who gets to tell everyone what to do. But you're too young yet. While you grow up studying and play, I will be ordering others around and taking care of unexciting paperwork. How does that sound? Grover frowned. My daddy was emperor. Where is daddy old bird? Uh oh. Eros's smile faded away. How would he explain death to a four year old? He's only four? Your father. He's with Boreas now. Among golden fountains in the heavenly mountains, walking in the gardens of Ayr, along with his ancestors, testing his newfound strength by sparring with Arcturus. So he cannot be emperor now. He trusts me and you to do his duty from now on. Grover's eyes were open wide in amazement. Old bird, can you tell me more about the Boreas? Eros smiled again. Of course, young Grover, and you can call me Eros. You're in your safe claws now, little Grover. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can do partial mobilization? I'm thinking that sounds pretty darn good. Oh, more political power game, monthly population. Oh, oh, we can do that one too. Oh, that's cool. More division attack. We can't do this because we're not non-aligned. Damage garrison school. Ella Grimwing. Operative slots, that's pretty good. Friendly preacher. Captain of industry. Ooh, what do we have elsewhere? Military high command, infantry, infrastructure. Oh my goodness. This is this I mean this is great. I mean all the love that's been poured into this. I'm just not sure what to do, man. I'd love to have some more stuff, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Partial mobilization it is. Everyone around us, don't worry, we're not going to go to war yet. Yet. Now, we do have a lot of vassals or puppets here, so I'm a little apprehensive about what they might do. They might stay with us, they might not. I really don't know at the time of this recording, so. And I'm sure you guys know what's going to happen, especially on historical, which is cool. Which is cool. Deal with the bureaucrats, actually. Yeah, some of these guys are ready to become free. Fevisia. Greifen Marsh. Uh, free City of Romao, which I know as. Another popular, very popular YouTuber for Hoi4 plays one day and had mixed feelings about it, but you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, go ahead and train th those little guys. 
You can only train so much. It's a great betrayal. Oh, no, 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 no. After nearly a month since we managed to secure the Regency's council support for our cause, it seems as if things were finally calming down in Griffenheim following the initial power struggle. Unfortunately, we were proven wrong as today during a council meeting, Duchess Gabriela Eagleclaw, Grand Duke Gerlach, and other allies simply left the room, followed by numerous notable nobles from all across Hirschland. Hours later, the Duchess announced the formal secession of the Strawberry Duchy and the Grand Duchy of Adistria from the Empire. I was just talking about this! News were also arriving of Griffin Martian declaring independence, their peasant council outrageously refusing to recognize Archon Eros as a rightful regent of the Empire. Meanwhile, Catherine, well, no one can tell what is happening in the Cursed Land, but... And the three Archons have other concerns at the present. Oh, oh I knew this would happen. Oh, independence. Oh, no, the Reich's Pact is falling apart. No... No. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like this. But there's nothing I can do. Except keep in mind who left us. The evil people who left us. I'm still going to defend the lands here, though. Oh, there's Romau. Bronze Hill nationalizes imperial assets. Much of Bronze Hill's industrial infrastructure and mining assets are now owned and operated by firms based in Griffenheim. This is due to the imperial court having a vested interest in overseeing the economy of Bronze Hill for the benefits of its citizens. However, recently there's been talk of nationalizing these assets with claims of mismanagement and not enough economic benefit remains in Bronze Hill. If this course of action is allowed to reach its conclusion, this would mean a massive loss of monetary assets by some of our leading firms. Currently, or currently, the Imperial Court is divided between approaching this diplomatically and issuing a strongly worded protested letter against our vassal, and taking a more forceful approach which would see us deliver a militarized reminder of our dominance. Hold on now, hold on. So Bronze Hill's up here, and they have a direct border with us. If, I mean, we could probably put them down. That is a fancy qu count. The crisis? Banking reforms? Oh, they're pacifists. Let's see, they got 21,000 po- What is this? Oh, again. Oh, that's so helpful. That's so helpful. F mm, we could put them down if we want to. We have good relations. I don't want to have bad relations with you guys. But something tells me, if I have to mobilize an army against you guys... Let's see what happens. We are busy with more pressing matters that let them nationalize. Send a strongly worded protest. We like you guys. I really like you guys. I don't know anything about you, but I like you. Um, why are you all the way over there? Could you come over here? Uh, we're gonna deal with bureaucrats, but I don't understand, like, why everyone's going that way. Just in case. Now, I know doing it like this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but, you know, we'll see what happens. There you go. Cool, no national focus set. Great, restore these people. Oh, that's not bad. Political advisor cause, development grants. Start a literacy campaign. Nice. There's so much I want to do here. Power to the three. Gains national spirit, empowered archons, which... Oh. Land reforms? Oh, God, there's so much I want to do. We shall not allow the wretched nobles to rule the empire any longer. The power must be taken away from the Regency Council and given solely to the Archons, for only they can ensure the people's safety and well-being. No one else. That totally won't hurt me in the long run, right? Right? Hmm. Anti-traditionalist. A ponies and changing. They are coming. Run, run, every pony. Run for your lives. The pony will surely escort it out and be told to be more tolerant and friendly to other races. Well, if you want to read about this, go right ahead, man. How rude. Sabotage. A deafening explosion woke to many of the sleeping citizens of the Empire last night, sending out a shockwave that shattered windows for miles around. Our patrols did manage to apprehend one of the culprits as they fled the site, but his fellow saboteurs were able to break him free before we completed our interrogation. Even still, we had enough time to get an employer out of the saboteur. The attack was organized by the Strawberry Duchy. Miraculously, there were no deaths, but one of our factories has suffered heavily damage. Nonetheless, we cannot allow this to trespass against our authority. Go unpunished. Well, either way, one of our factories is going to get hurt. Who am I going to have to clap to get rid of you? We need more guns. We definitely need more guns. You know, I don't want to do it like this, but you know what? So be it. Oh, that actually was a really bad idea. Ooh. Now we're not making any tanks. Hmm. Oh well. Happy 1008. 1008. The Killian Revolution, the second one. Cool. Uh, I want to get through one more focus before we do anything else. Uh, or before we end the episode. That'd be fun.
Modest illiteracy. Rex army. Love it. So can we upgrade anybody, actually? Eric? No? Oscar. Someone here can get an upgrade, I know. No? Alright, hold. No more coins from Skyfall. Today, unlike previous years, the Imperial Foreign Affairs Ministry didn't receive any letters from Skyfall, at least none containing any coins. It seems that after the demise of the Chancellor Guichard, the new leaders of Skyfall had little interest in pursuing this peculiar form of humor. That joke shall not be missed. Wow, I get a whole political power. And no, I thought we had someone who could get some more stuff, but that's okay. And let's get one more focus in. One more focus. The Perishers of Sikemon joins the Concordat of Southern Nations. Well, okay, whatever. The power to the three, empowered archons. Daily fascism support, more monthly population, daily political power gain. I love the political power. But let us do, I think supporting mass illiteracy, getting rid of that sounds pretty good to me. I don't like this too much. Imperial grants, I like that, or development grants. No mercy. Oh, the knights. Oh. Reward the faithful. Let's start a literacy campaign. So, without modernization, our empire will crumble. However, we can't hope to modernize without granting our people more education. It will take some time, but we must start a literacy campaign now rather than later. Every temple shall offer free education to all griffins, so anyone can learn to read and with enough dedication even right but that's going to conclude today's first episode of me playing a quest war as the griffonian empire which the rex pact has definitely gotten smaller but i hope you enjoyed today's episode let me know things i should know in the comments below and other tidbits of information that everyone else should know regarding about this so uh like i said i hope you enjoyed today's episode if you did consider leaving a like subscribe if you're new check out my discord link in the description below and i will see you all tomorrow as we shall expand maybe as the Griffonian Empire and improve our country. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.